Welcome to the Wondrous History Podcast and to the last episode of the mini-series looking at some of the most important doges in 16th century Venetian history, part of the broader rulers and monarchs of the 16th century Mediterranean and Europe series. Throughout this series, I've talked about the histories of doges Leonardo Loredan, Andrea Gritti, Alvise Mocenigo, along others. Today, we talk about Pasquale Cicogna, who became doge in 1585. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and other platforms if you haven't done so already. It really does help the channel a lot. Let us resume. Cicconia was born in April 1509 in Venice, part of the Manolesso family, one of the newer Venetian aristocratic families. In the mid-1530s, he would be treasurer of Friuli, afterwards Podesta of Treviso between 1564 and 1565, and briefly after this he spent time in Venetian Crete, named Candia at the time. In Jerusha Richardson's primary source edition on Venetian doges, we get a few glimpses into his personality, life and rule as Venetian doge. The source reads the following, quote, Pasquale Cicogna was a man of prudence and piety who had distinguished himself as governor of Canea in wars with the Turks. His election, however, was not very popular. The crowd shouted for Vincenzo Morosini, but when the election became protracted, Morosini withdrew his candidature, thus giving evidence of the generous nature which had gained his popularity. Cicogna was not liberal. Perhaps he was not rich. He had, however, a pretty sentiment, and as a memorial that the news of his elevation had come to him at Crociferi, he had a customary ocele, uh, which were coins distributed as ducal largesse at the coronations, stamped with three crosses and the inscription Hinc Resurrectio et Salus. The reign of Ciconia proved a reign of peace, but this was less because of the gentle nature of the Doge than because the nations of Europe were all preoccupied with other affairs than those of Italy. France was torn with the conflicts which went before the triumph of Henry of Navarre, and Philip II was engaged upon his war on England. The building of some great churches, San Francesco di Paolo among them, and the restoration of others, went on apace in Venice, what time the Spanish Armada sailed forth upon its direful quest. The Ducal Palace, the Library and the Mint were decorated with pictures, statues and other works of art, and the Venetian Academy of Letters was established. As a glorious monument, too, of Ciconia's period, if not of his personal artistry, there remains the present Rialto Bridge. At the end of his time, the people had the doge they shouted for. There had never been a more popular choice than that of Marino Grimani in 1595. End of quote. We will talk more about Doge Grimani and his successor, Leonardo Donato, in an, another episode in the future when I want to do a segment on the impact of the interdict of 1606-07 and the decline of the Venetian Republic in the 17th century. Ciconia passed away in early April 1595, clearly more of a a pro-French doge, as were his predecessors, he supported the claim of Henry of Navarre to the French throne. Venice continued its economic recovery and maintained peaceful relationships with the Ottomans. Ciconia would be remembered for his support of local monuments and landmarks such as the Rialto Bridge. It was a reign of peace at the end of a century full of wars. Three wars against the Ottomans, the War of the League of Cambrai, among others. Venice managed to navigate these conflicts, which came at a cost. This concludes this mini-series, which looked at the history of some of the most important doges in 16th century Venetian history. There will be a surprise episode until I shall start talking about the 16th century popes, so stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. Hope you found it helpful. Subscribe, leave a like if you can. And until the next time, all the best.